So hey everyone, today I am going to discuss with you a proper roadmap of Java language. I will discuss how to learn Java language, which concepts to learn in that, and from where to learn, what are the resources to learn Java language. So let's get started. So first of all, resources to learn Java. So we have 100 plus Java programs that I will tell you later on that from where to access them. And after that, I have also my handwritten Java notes that you can see and learn Java very properly. And then I will also recommend the best YouTube channel to learn the Java language. So let's start with the roadmap. So first of all, basics of programming. You should know the basics of programming, that what is programming and what are the things that are done in the program, like type of languages, flowcharts, pseudocodes, etc. So let me show you the notes also of Java language that I had made so that you can go through the notes also and also the roadmap so that you can understand it properly. So let's see the notes. So first of all, I had explained here what is programming in simple words and then what are the type of languages and then basics of programming like what is language, procedural and functional languages and then object-oriented programming languages and then static based dynamic. So these are the things like what are the variables, flow, program, then flow chart, how it works, how to write a pseudocode. All these things are the basics of programming that you will learn first of all. And then we will start with the Java. So first of all, we will see what is the Java VSC plus plus. Mean to say that why Java, what are the features of Java, and then difference between Java and C plus plus, and also the Java environment. Let me show you this also. Like first of all, I had told you what is Java, then features of Java, and then I had also explained about the difference between Java and C plus plus. You can see it here. very properly in good handwriting. You can understand from it. And then I had also discussed about the environment of Java. And then also, what is application programming and applets in Java, and then runtime environment, and then how code executes in Java. There's a difference in C and Java that how the code is executed. That I had also explained very properly. And then, architecture of Java. And after that, the Java runtime environment also. There are so many different things that are very useful to, for you to learn. If you want to give proper examinations of Java, then you can see these things. And then after that, uh, we have let's code in Java. So what is the next thing in our roadmap? That is basic Java programs like printing or taking user input. These are the basic Java programs that I will also discuss here. That how to code in Java, what is function, how to run the code, how to run it in CMD, and then what is public study world main, and how to output in Java, and how to take input in Java. As I had discussed in that roadmap, that I have provided in the notes also. And then we also have working in classes. Structure of a Java program. And to say that how we can work in the classes. You can see it in Java program structure. That how the structure of the program has been made. And how we are working in the classes. And then we also have after that. Basic terminologies of Java. Like what are keywords, identifier, neutral, token, separators, constants, etc. That I had also discussed in my these notes. You can see it in very properly, very easy language. And then we have variables in Java. So what are the variables? Variables are just temporary memory storage location. That I also explained there very properly. And then also data types in Java. So I had also explained the data types in Java that there are two types of data types, primitive and non-primitive. And I had also explained it properly, the types with the value, size, maximum value, minimum value, etc. So you can read them and properly learn the Java language from here. And after that, I had also discussed many things. So let's see the next part of the roadmap. That is type conversion in Java, also known as typecasting. So I had also explained about the typecasting, that how we can convert one type to another type. And then in the roadmap, we have operators in Java. So operators are the symbols like this, plus, minus, multiply, divide, and many more which I used in the Java language and also many other languages of program. So I discussed the operators. There are eight types of operators that I have discussed here that you can also learn from my notes or following this roadmap or following anything else. So these are the operators like arithmetic, relational, logical, assignment, increment, decrement, conditional, bitwise, and special operators. So you can also see the examples and also see the explanation of that. I will explain it properly. And uh, after this operators in Java, we have control statements in Java. Control statement means that how to control the flow of a program. 
So how we can control the flow of the token? By using the decision making statements or looping statements. So after managing operators, you have to learn decision making statement and looping statements that I had also provided here. Like you can see here, decision making statements, if else, and many more, like nested in, else if riders, etc. I'd also shown in the roadmap that if the statements and switch statements are decision making statements. And after that, we have looping statements. So looping statements are like while loop, do while loop, and for loop. Looping means evolving around the thing, you to say that repeating the thing again and again. So that's what called as a loop. But also explained about the loops here. You can see after the switch statement, I had explained about the looping statements also. That what are loops? What is by loop? Do I loop according to that syntax also? And after that, what is different between while and do I loop? And after that, also the for loop statement. So you can refer my notes and learn these things. Also, see this roadmap to see the proper syllabus of that thing, and then OOPS concepts in which we have object oriented programming concepts. So, in this, we have classes and objects. So, working with classes and how to work with objects, and then fields and methods. So, what are fields? Fields are just variables that are used in the classes, and methods are the functions that are used in the classes. So, we also have the notes for that. So, let's see, we have the classes notes, and then how field is declared, how method is declared proper syntax of that and after that we have creating the objects and then a proper program to explain the things and don't worry each and every concept have its program i will tell you where to find that program so after these classes and objects we have concept of constructors so after learning about what are classes and objects you can know that what is constructor the constructor is the same method name as the given as the class name you need to say that the name that is given to the class is same name as a given to our method. So let's see the constructors. We also have the constructor nodes with the proper program of that. And then we also have its types also. Then how to write the constructor, how what is default constructor, what is parameterized constructor, we also have that. And after that, we have to also learn about the things like functions and methods. So what is function? A function is a simple function that is outside a class. But what is named known as a method? Method is the thing. That is a function that is inside a class. So working with methods in a class is very important thing. So how to work with it? We also want to know that thing also in the Java. But after that, we should know that what is method overloading. We also have the notes of method overloading here, you can see. So after that, we have static variables and methods. So what are static variables and methods in Java? This is also must know things in the Java. So we also have the notes for that here, yeah? members, and how to define the static members and what is static variables. I had made a proper program of that. Then nesting of methods, etc. And after that, we have concept of inheritance. So in Java, we also have a concept of inheritance because it is object oriented program. So we will have a concept of inheritance. Inheritance means deriving a class from an existing class. These are the three classes that are being derived from this existing class. So we have five type of inheritance that is single, multi-level, hierarchical, multiple and hybrid. You can see it here, single, multi-level and hierarchical are supportable in Java, but multiple and hybrid are not supported. But in the case of C++, it is supported. So why it is not supported and how we can use them, we will see in the notes. So first of all, you can see it here, I had explained about inheritance here, that single, hierarchical, hybrid, multi-level and multiple are there. And in last, I had also shown it here. Multiple inheritance can be implemented using interface, which we will see later. So the concept of multiple inheritance and hybrid you can see later in interfaces. So first of all, you have to learn inheritance, single, multi-level, and hierarchy. That I have the proper notes of that. You can see it here with proper explanation and programs. And you can also implement these programs. So I have also given the proper data reporting that I will tell you in the last that from where to find the programs and then we have overriding methods so yes after method overloading you know what is method overloading you will come to know and you will just learn the concept of constructors and after that you will know the concept of methods that how to overload methods that how the uh, methods are overloaded I mean to say that same name of method is defined again but with different functionalities or different arguments so that is known as method overloading 
And after overloading, you should know that what is method overriding also. So about that also, I had also given the notes here. And after that, we also have some like, another notes like what is final, what is finalizer methods that you can see. After that, one thing you have to learn in Java is abstraction. That what is the concept of abstraction? That what are abstract methods and classes in Java. So I had also provided the notes for that here. You can see it here with proper explanation of program and then visibility control to say that uh, what are public classes, what are private classes, what are um, protected classes so these are the things that you can see from here and after that what the things you have to learn is Ares in Java so in other concepts, in other languages we learn Ares before object oriented programs but here we are learning after discussing the classes and constructor concept why? because here we have to use the Ares by using the different syntax not using like the syntax that we use in the C++ language simply by declaring int ARR equal to given value here we consider the different syntax for Java that's why we learn arrays after the classes and objects concept to understand the things about the classes and objects but if you don't want to understand that things you can learn the arrays before that time also so I had also given the notes for array and types also one dimensional, two dimensional how to create it, how to declare it proper explanation with proper program also and then after arrays we have strings in java so strings in java are also there you can see it here after there is strings in java so string object is there and then we have the different methods of string you can see along with different method available in string class so there's a class of strings where you can see the different methods that are available that you can use and make a program and after learning the strings we have array in advance we need to say that you also have some different things that you can use instead of array, which is based on array, like vectors and array list, which I had also discussed afterwards. This that is vector and array list you will get in the end because I was learning at that time, so I learned the array list in that. So after this, what is the next concept? So remember, I had told you what is interface in Java. I told you that we will use interface in Java and we will do multiple inheritance. So for Java, there is an interface concept also. That what is interface and how we use them, how we implement them, how we extend an interface. So I had also provided the notes for that. Like uh, what is interface and how we can achieve the multiple inheritance from them. So yes, we have to see the concept of how we can achieve the multiple inheritance from interface. So let me let you see the back side of that. So you can see it here. We have inheritance of five types. We can achieve single, multi-level and hierarchical inheritance through the simple Java language concepts. But if we want to accept or we want to get the multiple inheritance and hybrid inheritance, for that we need the interfaces in Java. That's why I had written there achieving multiple inheritance. So we have to learn about the interfaces in Java and how to achieve the interface and how to extend the interface and how to implement the interfaces, how we can achieve the multiple inheritance and explain everything very properly is the proper program of that also hybrid methods you can see it from here and then after the interfaces what thing to learn in java that is concept of packages like uh, packages are there in the java like uh, import the modules in python so what is that it is like a package you use the npm in javascript in nodejs in react import the modules in npm from npm npm install and then you write the module in for packages that is also concept of package similarly there are different packages in java that you can use that you can create also import also and use that package in your java language so this is the concept of package that i had displayed and described here so you can also learn about packages from here i had properly explained the things about packages after that we have multi-threading in java so after packages we have multi-threading so what is multi-threading Multi-threading is big, dividing our program into different parts and running it simultaneously. Like this is our whole program and we have divided it into different parts, different threads and then running these threads simultaneously. One will run, then second will run, then third will run. This is the concept of multi-threading in Java that you can also see in my notes. And explain properly what is multi-threading with the diagrams, with the explanation and also the difference between multi-threading and multitasking. If you know operating system, then we able to discover the difference and then we also have the concept of creating the threads that how to create the threads how to run the multiple parts of program first of all we will create the threads and then how we can run the multiple parts of program 
and after that we have extracting the third class etc etc there are so many zones for that also so being blocking etc etc and then we have a life cycle of threat that i have told you and then we have life cycle of threat that i had written here also that you must know the life cycle of threat why because it is very important question if you want to give the examinations of java so this is very important question for that thing also that what is the life cycle of threat and how threat revolves there is no one state then there is Turnable state, then learning state, then block state, then dead state. You have to learn the, these things. Like you have to learn things. Like you should know the concept of these things. That how it works. What is the proper state of the thread? What is happening in the thread? So that you can know by using this concept of life cycle of thread. And after that, various thread methods. Yes, like you have thread method like yield, stop, sleep that I have explained in the program. So you can learn these things also. And after that, there is thread exceptions also. That what are the exceptions in thread? that we will see later on that what are exceptions because it is a separate topic and then we have thread priority we must know that how we can set the priority of thread at which part of program should run firstly and then secondly and then thirdly so for setting the priority we must know the thread priority and also explain the proper priority of thread with the program so you can see it more and after that we also have next thing that is error handling in Java after finishing the thread concept what we will see that is error handling in Java. So, what is error handling? Mean to say simply handling the errors, but which errors that are runtime errors, exception handling, the concept of exception handling in Java. So, exception handling in Java, how we can achieve that? We can refer to these notes. You can see the notes also here. Then what is exception handling? Compile time runtime errors. And then what is exception? How to handle that? What are the things that we use that I had written there? We must know about the tribe block catch block throw things how to try the error how to catch the error handling the runtime error by generating the exceptions so you must learn these things in java learn the exception handling concept that i had explained properly in these notes you can see here and after that what we have is we also have catching multiple exceptions we need to say that catching multiple exceptions means catching multiple errors in a program at runtime like one error will come like array is full and another error will come dividing by zero. There are two to three errors. How we can catch two to three errors? That concept is also important in exception handling. That I had also explained it here by using multiple catch blocks. And then we have use of finally. We must know the use of finally in exception handling. That's why we use finally. What is the use of that? How to make a program for that? And also explain this properly. And after that, we have throwing our own exception. How we can throw our own exception? We can how we can make an exception or error in a program that we can throw so that it will help the user to do the right things in a program. We also have the concept of that here. And then we have applets in Java. There is also a new concept in Java to say that a different concept that you can't see in any other languages that is applet programming. So, what is applets? Applets are the things the code of Java is running on the applet viewer. You can see it here. The code of Java can be running on the applet viewer or it can run on the browsers. So I have also concept of that here, applet programming and then how to build the applet code and then what are applets Then simple program to print the applets, use the applets, etc, etc. And then we also have the applet lifecycle. Like we have thread lifecycle, we also have the applet lifecycle that how the applet works, what is the cycle of that? And first of all, it, it is born and then running, then idle, then dead, etc. etc. So you must know about these things also. And then we also have applets in Java, mean to say that running code on applet viewer or running code in web browser. So it is the meaning of the applet is like that. Like you can run your applet program in applet viewer. That is like a window on which you can run your Java program. It will show you the graphics and also you can run it on your browser so these are the two things you must know that how to run applets in java and i had also provided how to design a web page how to use applet how to run it and uh, you can see it here running the applet on the browser also and applet here also so you can learn these things also the applet working with html so yes you must know working with html you can see it here html tags are also used what is this html is this so you should know what, how to work with HTML because if you want to run your program on the web browser, then you must know how to work with HTML. 
So after learning F plus, you can also learn HTML. So there are a lot of things that you can learn in Java. And then we have working with files in Java. So how to handle files, how to work with the files in Java. So we also have the concept of this in Java. So for that, we also have the notes. So you can check them. Input output in files, then how to work with files, etc, etc. So you must know what are files, team, what is team file, what is out file. And also explain it properly here. And also many different things also that stream classes, what is stream in system dot out, system dot in, and etc. So you can see the creation of files and then how we can use the stream of which, what is in file, out file, test dot that, etc. etc. And then reading and practice. So you must know read and write that how to read the file, how to write the characters in the file, working with file objects and bytes. I'll also discuss that things also here. And you can see the programs also here. So you can also run the programs and understand learn the Java language properly. Working with bytes is also present there. And then what we have in the last. In the last we have Java database connectivity that is JDBC. That how we can connect our Java application, Java language with database. So you must know how to connect the Java with database. We also have notes regarding that. You can see there that uh, there is a theory of that and then also the different things that steps to connect with database. So you must know database connectivity in Java and that how to connect the Java language program with the database and how to extract the things from that. So for that we also have this. So how to connect to the database with proper steps of that you can see it and after that creating a JDBC application and how you can create an application using Java database connectivity and then you have the connecting and running the program how you can connect and run the program that is Java database connectivity like you will connect it to you using Oracle like I had connected it with Oracle using the Oracle driver and I have extracted the data from the Oracle tables Oracle is a database so after that we have JDBC architecture that we were seeing here, watching here. That is architecture of Java database connectivity. I'll also explain it properly that how architecture works and what are the things that you can see here. So this is the Java database connectivity. And after that, if you know the connectivity, you must know the queries of database also. That how to use the database queries to extract the data. So you can extract the data and convert your data to a Java program. Output. You can collect the data to our output of Java. So this is about the Java database connectivity. And now if you know the database connectivity, then you must know the uh, concept of networking. So there is also a concept of Java networking. You must know the basics of networking in Java. Yes, basics are must. You can see the basics from these nodes also, Java networking. And what is TCP, UDP, Java.net, package, etc. There are different things. And after that, after that, there is socket and many more concepts that you can learn in Java. And in the end, I have also written the Java plus DC. This is for those who want to learn the Java language full properly. And after that, they can also cover their data structures in Java. Like I'm learning the Java and data structure. So this was about my notes that I had also shown you. And along with that, I had also shown you my Java roadmap that you can follow. And after that, we have the end of this Java programming. Need to say that end of the all major concepts of Java. So all the major concepts of Java are ended after that. So what was this? All the things that I discussed is and I discussed the proper roadmap of Java language. That from where to start and where to end, and from where to learn and from where you can learn everything. So you had seen my notes here. This is the end of my notes. So you can see the different type of pages here, different type of programs, different type of concepts, and with proper explanation. So you had seen my notes. Now, how you can learn only from notes? You have to also see the programs. So let's discuss first of all, where are the 100 plus Java programs present? That are present in GitHub repository. Infotech program is the name of my uh, GitHub profile that you can search on the Google. Otherwise, I will also provide the link in the description. So you can see 100 plus Java programs are available. Let me show you in the browser. If I have, I will open them. So let me open them. Let's see. So this is my GitHub profile. You can see it here. This is my GitHub profile. And I had pinned that Java language programs. There is the learn Java program. You can click it here. You can see the GitHub repository. You can mark it star here. And also fork this repository. And you can learn the things I had provided from basics, control statements, methods, classes and objects, constructor, 
static members, nesting of methods, inheritance, polymorphism, abstractions, array, string, interface, package, importing package, thread, exception handling, applets, file handling, database connectivity, and after that, data structure problem also. Some basic few data structure problems, not all. I will delete that. I will make a separate equation for that. So this is the equation here and you can find the codes. So I had written the programs inside that that you can find. You can learn through my notes, refer my notes, and after that you can also see the program regarding that. Each and every program is made according to the notes, following the proper procedure by following the proper roadmap that I had shown you here. You can see the screen as the thing that I have followed step by step I had shown you here. And you can see the programs there. So you can access other programs from here. I will provide you my GitHub link, or I will just provide you this GitHub link of that repository. And after that, what next? We have detailed Java notes. You had seen my notes, I showed you along with the roadmap, I showed you the notes. Now you know I have an explanation of proper detailed notes. So you can see them, you can learn from them very properly. So where you will have you will find it on the telegram channel. I will provide the link of telegram channel also. So let me show you my telegram channel. That's how you can find it. So let me open my telegram channel first. My telegram channel name is also Infotech Programming. You can search it or you can see it. I will provide the link of my telegram channel. So you are watching, there are different things that I have shared there. Along with my videos, I also share the resources here. Like uh, there is a resource, there is a resource. Different resources are there, like notes are there, are different type of notes here. And you can also find my Java links. What you have to do, you have to just search. If I'm searching here, Java. Oops. So let's see if it comes. Yes, it comes. Programming in Java notes. Copyright ITP.pd. So this is the note. Java language notes for 163.31. The notes that you have seen currently, that are the notes that are present on this Telegram channel. That are made by me. By following the proper book and course and also writing the programs. You can follow these notes. And after that, more Java tutorials. If you want the Java tutorials on my YouTube channel, then must comment down below. We'll also try to make the Java tutorials by explaining each and every set properly in the video. And then I will also talk about that. Uh, you can see the uh, channel that which channel is good for the Java. So let me open my YouTube and then I will show you which are channels that are good for Java. So let it open. Tutorials for being the in that you can see for code with Eric. Code with Eric channel is very good if you want to follow it in the Hindi. In Hindi it is very good. After that, we also have this Java in one shot. You can also check this Kumar Mitharwal channel that is Kapna College. And then there are so many more channels like uh, this is a Nesho Academy Java program that will teach you according to your syllabus, according to your examinations. And then we also have the best courses like Pre Code Camp is providing a very nice course on Java. And uh, the thing that I follow is this. I follow this channel. I had followed the this channel's playlist that is this one that I am following. Not followed, but I am following that that is this Java plus DSA plus Internet application course that you can also follow. This is very nice course. It is very 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 nice playlist that you can follow. You can follow this playlist for learning Java along with the interview preparation things, that is data structures. So these were some resources and this was the proper roadmap of the Java language. I hope you like that. And in the end, I want to say that thanks for watching. And if you like our work, then please support us by a like, comment and share on our YouTube videos with your friends. It will be very helpful for me. Because if you will subscribe to our channel, like and comment and then it will also provide the contact to other students and also watch my video. YouTube will also recommend the videos to other students. So much subscribe my channel and thanks for watching. We will meet you next time.